And we are live. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Punch Perfect Boxing Channel, proudly sponsored by Empire Fight Store. Before we get going today, please make sure to like the video, comment your thoughts down below, and if you're new, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Today, I'm going to be reviewing what was an incredible fight last night on the zone between Lewis Neri and Azat Ovenetian. For me, it is the leading candidate for fight of the year. We've set the bar high. There's been some great fights with Baturbiev, Yard, Wilson, Navarrete. There's been some really strong contenders already. But this, for me, took the biscuit last night. It was an incredible fight. You know, I've circled Mateus versus Ponce as what I think will be fighting the year. But if that can top this, then we've got an all-time classic on our hands because this was one of the best fights we've seen in a while. You know, my pre-fight expectations were that Lewis Neri was going to win the fight. I felt that he was the superior offensive fighter. I also felt that he was more versatile, having performed at a higher level, but he can do it on the front foot and the back foot. You know, on the back foot, we've seen against Carlos Castro, he can be cute and he can kind of lower fights down to his pace if he needs to. And we've also seen him on the offensive and making guys uncomfortable and taking people out. So I just felt that he'd be too versatile and have too much in his offensive arsenal to get him out of there. And that ultimately proved the case, but the fight was back and forth throughout. Hovhannisian is known as being a bit of a bully. He's unrelenting, and at times he was that. But there were also times where he couldn't be that because of what Lewis Neri had done. And Lewis Neri, you know, I, I said in my prediction video that I've had my criticisms of him in the past. I've been very critical of, you know, his actions in and out of the ring, you know, failed drugs tests, not making weight on the week of the fight, being very unprofessional, not holding up his end of the bargain when it's come to big fights that could have been made. But ultimately, I think he earned back some honour and some fan credit last night because he came through a really sticky situation. The only time we've seen that in the past, he's wilted and there's been doubts over his character and how volatile he is. He answered those questions last night. He gave the fans exactly what they wanted. And I think he's learned from his mistakes tactically and technically, which we're going to talk about as well. So how the fight played out, Lewis Neri started really strongly. He was the superior fighter offensively. He was landing the left hand at will. He was setting up his shots beautifully. He was moving nicely. He was fluid. He was relaxed. He was landing the bigger punches in a firefight because they were trading. It was competitive. It was exciting right from the opening bell. But Lewis Neri was getting the better of the action. As the fight started to progress, Hovhannisian started to come into the fight. Now, whilst he did make some adjustments, and I do want to give him credit for that, a lot of it is actually down to Neri's conditioning and perhaps him being a little bit lazy at times. He's admitted that in the past that he's been a bit lazy in moments. Um, he admitted last night that perhaps he was a little bit lazy at times as well. It's one of the reasons Renoso got rid of him because he was just too lazy at various points. But it did open the door for Hovhannisian to start to come back into the fight. And the change that I'd like to mention most that Hovhannisian did that just I thought was so impressive because he's not necessarily known as a technical fighter, but the adjustment he's made was... I highlighted in my prediction video that he likes to just launch this wild one-two and then once it brings him into range, he'll then try and maul you. And against orthodox fighters, and he's tend to have faced mostly orthodox fighters, he throws the jab and that forces his opponent to move to their left. Then he brings the right hand and he's got you where he wants you and he'll maul you on the inside. Last night, because Neri was moving off to his right as a southpaw, he was trying to throw that jab, never moved to his right, and then there's nothing for the right hand to do unless you can adjust quickly, and Hovhannisian just simply can't. So instead, what he started to do was reverse the one-two. So you throw the right hand first, Lewis Neri would move off to the right, but then there's room then for the left hand to come in. And once he did that, he started to maul him on the inside, and it really started to work. And he started to bring the right hand into play, he started to get closer. He was being picked off a little bit at times, and the better shots in the exchanges were coming from Neri. But that was an adjustment Hovhannisian made to start making Neri fight his fight. So I thought that was really interesting in the middle rounds. The thing that Hovhannisian needed to do more of and the thing that Neri hates the most is body punches. Neri doesn't have a good poker face, a bit like Mauricio Lara last night. When those body shot lands, you'll see a bit of a smirk, he'll bang the gloves, you'll kind of see a reaction, he'll talk to you. Lewis Neri, when he fought Brandon Figueroa, hated it to the body and we've seen that that's his weakness. But the thing that I give Lewis Neri a lot of credit for is he's learnt now not how to deal with body shots because he still doesn't like them, and when Hovhannisian landed them last night, he still didn't like them. What he's learned is to make sure that his opponents pay the price for going to his body. Now, Hovhannisian tried to go to the body last night, and he was caught with big counters and uppercuts through the middle and the left hand over the top when his guard dropped. And Hovhannisian's corner basically told him, look, we want you to go to the body, but you can't because you're getting caught far too much with that uppercut or the left hand over the top or the left hook over the top. So Hovhannisian was having success to the body, and that was the key to getting to Neri. 
that Neri made sure there was a consequence every time he tried to attack downstairs. And that's something Neri has learned that he didn't have in his arsenal before the Brandon Figueroa fight, but he now does have and makes him a 10 times better fighter for it and a much more durable and efficient fighter for it. It's going to be very difficult now to break Lewis Neri down if you can go to that, if you can't go to that body because he's baiting you and he's trying to walk you into a trap. So very clever from Lewis Neri. I don't know if that's something his new training team's brought into him, but he seems to have massively approved in that department of making you pay the price for going to his body because he doesn't like it there, but he's now making it difficult for you to attack it. So I thought that was very clever from Lewis Neri. Hovenetian had a lot of success to the body when he was throwing the straight right hand because there was less consequence there. But whenever he loaded up with freeze and fours and tried to come round the side, he was wide open through the sh for the shots through the middle. And Neri spotted that. Heading late on into the fight, I had Neri slightly ahead, but felt that Hovenetian was the one that was coming on strong. At the end of the ninth round, it felt like Hovenetian was really turning the fight into his favour. And I thought, you know what, if he wins these next couple in similar fashion, the judges will probably give this to him, despite me feeling Neri built up a bit of a lead. And once it was six or seven rounds in, I just felt that it couldn't go the diff uh, the distance because both men were just loading up so much and they were both so tired and such a frantic pace and such a grueling fight. You know, Hovenetian was cut quite badly as well. But I wanted it to finish in a knockout as well, despite me picking Neri on points. And the reason was because I just felt it had been so competitive throughout and such a firefight that this classic of a matchup might have been ruined by the judges giving their scores for this. And I did feel that it was one of those fights where you could score it one or two ways in each of the rounds and it would have been really difficult to get a clear set of scorecards at the end of it. And despite perhaps Neri being on top for most of it, Hovenetian finishing strong, one of them maybe would have got really unlucky. So I'm glad it did end in a conclusive finish. How did that come about? You know, Hovenetian was, was going on strong in that 10th round and then right towards the end of the round, Neri just caught him with a beautiful counter left hook and just put him, you know, down on the canvas. Hovenetian just looked tired. He looked like he was out. And Neri had a couple of seconds to try and get it done, pushed him back to the ropes. They they both traded off on the ropes, and it was exciting. I thought the referee could have jumped in at that point. He didn't. He heard the bell. The round 11 comes. Hovenetian starts to find his feet again. Neri doesn't look like he's doing anything. He plants his feet for about 15 seconds, stands still on the spot, and then connects with a big overhand left again. Hovenetian staggers back, and the referee jumps in. Incredible fight. Just when you thought Hovenetian was getting to him, Neri stood his ground and his corner gave him some really sound advice. He didn't say, you're tired, Hovenetian's not getting the better of you. They said, you're being lazy and you can finish this when you want. That seemed to resonate and click with Neri. The Reynoso tried to say that sort of thing to Neri in the Alameda fight and it never really resonated with him. Last night it did, so Neri's learned from his mistakes and he turned it on when he needed to and he proved he was the better fighter. So fantastic fight and a great win for Lewis Neri, who proved a lot of doubt was wrong as well in the process. So now moving on to what comes next, obviously, he's now WBC mandatory, which means that he'll be in line to face the winner of Naoe Inoue versus Stephen Fulton Jr. There's going to be a little bit of a wait time before then, so I'd like to see him compete once more. Now that he's working with DAZN and Golden Boy, he's not signed to them, but he will be working with them moving forwards because of his manager is connected to Golden Boy. I'd actually quite like to see him try and pursue the winner of MJ Madlia versus Tapales, which is on the Bam Rodriguez card on April 8th. That's a fight that on DAZN can be made, and I think a more winnable fight than the winner of a Inoue versus Fulton. I think both of those guys, you know, Neri can be competitive against, but I think he comes up short against both of them. Against MJ, whilst I'd favour MJ, MJ's beatable. You know, MJ has a lot of issues that I think Neri has as well. And he hasn't lived the life of late MJ, you know, he hasn't really shown the interest to take on uh, Fulton, you know, he hasn't really spoke about that matchup much. He's made this Tapales fight, you know, drag out through injuries and things like that. He hasn't got much momentum despite getting a good win over Ronnie Rios. I do think that's a fight that Neri could win. And I think it's the fight that on the zone is a bit more makeable rather than going to purse bids and mandatory with the fault in a new way winner and waiting around another 12 months for that. That's what I think he should pursue. But regardless, Lewis Neri has shown now with wins over Hazat of Anisha and Carlos Castro, that he can compete with the best guys at 122. And I'm excited to see him in all those fights. And I still think the Inoue fight is hella exciting, so I'd love to see that. Who knows, if Inoue does lose to Fulton, why not make Inoue versus uh, Neri to try and get the fans excited again? For Hovenetian, 34 years old, he's absolutely mental, he just loves to fight. But last night, he was bloodied, he was bruised, he was stopped. And for a guy that's always had an elite chin... 
looked like perhaps the the legs had gone ever so slightly. He gave it his all, but right now there's going to be a bit of a backlog. Neri's the front runner. Aleem is right in the queue as well. You know, Fulton and Anoue are going to be taking on each other. To me, it just feels like you're going to be right down the pecking order and maybe put in with someone that's dangerous once again. So I'd call it quits at this point if I was Hovenetian, but credit to him, what a servant to the sport. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Just how much did you enjoy this fight? Is it your leading candidate for uh, for fight of the year? Go watch my Wood vs Lara review as well. But thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.